Thanks, Will, and, and thanks to um, Benchmark for the opportunity to present today, and, and thanks everyone for logging in online. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a great time to be in the nickel space, as as we found out um, yesterday from Elon that um, there's there's probably more demand coming than um, than the supplier can can keep up with, and um, yeah, really um, excited about the future of of the Takwa nickel project in northern Vietnam and and what that means um, for the Blackstone shareholders. Um, it's worth just talking about our, I suppose, history as a company. Um, we started off in Western Australia looking for nickel sulphide and uh, gold in, in uh, Greenfields Exploration. We then moved to the um, British Columbia project looking for cobalt. And so we still have our, our two, um, I suppose, non-core assets there, but it's worth mentioning, we started out this journey um, in towards battery metals through our cobalt asset in British Columbia. And through that asset, we started to build a relationship with the battery end users, and particularly in South Korea. And that started um, over two years ago now. We started um, talking to some of the major players in the South Korean um, uh, space. And, and through that relationship, we, we were, I suppose, given the um, insight into this movement towards high nickel cathode. And that, and that led us to acquiring the Tarquan nickel sulphide project in Northern Vietnam, which is now our flagship asset. So we've got a, an existing nickel sulphide mine operated um, for three and a half years previously um, between 2013 and 2016. And the previous owners sunk $136 million into the capital infrastructure. The previous owners weren't focused on battery products and, and, and they were more focused on the stainless steel industry and, and our focus will be on developing downstream products for the lithium ion battery industry. Just quickly on the board and management team. So we've got a, a team that's um, I suppose um, explored and, and developed um, mines all around the world. Um, there's a, a long history over 20 years of, of creating shareholder wealth, particularly through exploration and good geological science. Um, Hamish Halliday and Steve Parsons is other, the entrepreneurial, I suppose, partnership behind Blackstone. And, and, um, and there's a long history of creating uh, wealth for shareholders, but also making major discoveries. And that's what we're, we're looking to do and, and, and already doing very successfully over in Northern Vietnam. We actually purchased the um, mine off a, a um, metallurgist named Steve Ennor. So you can see Steve, Steve now part of our management team. He's a 30 year veteran of um, nickel sulfide metallurgy and he's now a major shareholder of the company as well. And Steve's gonna be a really integral part of, of restarting the mine and, and moving this mine back into production and then delivering some of these downstream products into the lithium ion battery industry. So you can see board and management have a strong position of around 14%. We recently just um, introduced Fidelity, which is one of the largest institutional investors in the, in the globe and, and really excited to, to bring on a major institutional investor like Fidelity. And recently also brought in EchoPro and we'll talk about EchoPro and how important they are to our future in Northern Vietnam. We've also got a very supportive shareholder in Deutsche Balaton out of Germany. So I've got a nice tight capital structure, um, well funded, $28 million um, recently. Um, we're just, just closing the $21 million raising um, with, um, which was cornerstone by Fidelity. So well funded for this next phase of growth for the Blackstone. So just on Echo Pro, so Echo Pro came in, as, um, they actually um, paid a significant premium to the market price for the Blackstone shares um, during the COVID period. They paid a 62% premium to market. So they're now our, our, our partner for, um, I suppose the future will be to, to look at a, a joint venture partnership arrangement with Echo Pro to build downstream, um, I suppose nickel, high nickel product, nickel, high nickel cathode products for the lithium ion battery industry. So you can see here, Echo Pro have a precursor business. They also have a lithium business and they um, bring those um, two, 
uh, businesses together to produce cathode. Um, we, we'd, so EcoPro is the, is the largest um, cathode manufacturer in South Korea and the second largest cathode manufacturer in the world. And they have invested into um, Blackstone Minerals, particularly to get access to the nickel that we have in Northern Vietnam with the Taqua Nickel Project. They have major customers, uh, Samsung, SDI and SK Innovation. So through our partnership with Echo Pro, we are uh, connected and, and well partnered with some of the biggest players in the lithium ion battery industry. Uh, we won't go too much into detail on this. We've, we've, we've I suppose, spoken um, at length around this high, high nickel cathode movement. So a reduction in, in the cobalt um, and an increase in nickel. Um, we also believe that, that um, there's, a, there's a, a good chance that we'll move past the NMC811 towards a 9.5.5 and then maybe one day there'll be a cobalt free battery. But I think at the moment, it's, it's very much focused on the N, NMC or NCM811 um, cathode. Uh, and and we're, we're very focused on that with our partner, Echo Pro. And, um, and so we, we have, I suppose, a very strong relationship with Echo Pro and we believe that at 811 is, is, a, is a good starting point, but there is, there is likely that, that, that we will go to even higher nickel cathode chemistry um, beyond 811. Um, we've also talked plenty around this. Um, I will say that we believe that um, we do have some of the, the greenest and cleanest nickel in the market. So we've, we've got a hydro power plant in the Son La province of Northern Vietnam. So this, this existing mine is already hooked into renewable power and which gives us a great, um, I suppose, platform to, to build green and um, class one nickel. So, it's as, as we've discussed today at length, it's all about the class one nickel. The, the beauty of our, our um, project is that we have a sulphide um, ore body and a sulphide district, and we'll talk more about the different ore bodies that we have, but the, that really, I suppose, helps for us for a nice, um, I suppose, simple processing route um, um, of, for the class one nickel products. So just on what we're trying to achieve, so we have an existing concentrator, um, we have an existing modern mechanised underground mine built by the previous owners. The previous owners, as I said, were focused on the stainless steel industry. They, they at the time that the mine was put under care and maintenance in 2016, the lithium ion battery industry had not, um, I suppose, t taken off. And what we've done is come in and drilled out the largest ore body that we could see. So we've drilled out the Banfook disseminated ore body, which is a, a, an intrusion associated with the mine that the previous owners have already depleted. Um, we think we have a, a very large disseminated sulphide ore body. It's one kilometre long, up to 500 metres wide. So we have a large uh, medium grade disseminated ore body, very similar to the Mount Keith nickel mine in Western Australia. So this is a picture of Mount Keith. We have a very similar uh, mining scenario to the Mount Keith nickel mine in Western Australia. Mount Keith today has a head grade of 0.5% nickel and we believe we have a similar, um, I suppose, mining scenario in Northern Vietnam. And the beauty of, of this is that we're already, as we can see, already plugged into the hydro renewable power. So in the Son La province of Vietnam, we have the largest hydro power plant in Southeast Asia. That gives us the opportunity for renewable and uh, green nickel, but most importantly, it also drives very low operating costs and, um, and the ability to, to scale up um, with, with low operating costs. So you can see this is a picture of the existing concentrator. We'll show some more pictures of that. Um, our, our focus and our strategy is to partner with, with Echo Pro and move towards the downstream products that are required for the lithium ion battery industry. LG Chem are looking to build a $2 billion battery plant in Northern Vietnam. They have a partnership with a local Vietnamese conglomerate looking to build electric vehicles and electric scooters. That's a group called VinFast. So we have an emerging um, hub for electronics, lithium ion batteries and electric vehicles in Northern Vietnam. So what um, Tessa talked about a lot today or yesterday was the, the localization of the, of the value chain. So we have this opportunity to take the nickel from the ground 
in northern Vietnam and end and will end up potentially in an electric vehicle um, down the road in in the port city of Haiphong near the mine. This is just a quick snapshot of some of the infrastructure. So the previous owners sunk $136 million. Um, the existing concentrator is ready to go. Um, there is a tariff on concentrate. So the Vietnamese government um, have a similar, I suppose, strategy to the um, Indonesia and, and the Philippines, whereby they are incentivizing downstream processing. So to remove that tariff, we need to build the downstream processing facility. We'll talk about what that means for Blackstone, but by building the downstream processing facility with our partner EcoPro, it allows us to remove the tariff. So there is an existing underground, modern mechanised underground mine. Um, this was mined to an Australian standard by Australian mining engineers and, and metallurgists. Um, but this is really about unlocking what we believe could be some world-class nickel sulphide geology. Um, we've got six drill rigs spinning as we speak. We're making major discoveries. The previous owners weren't focused on exploration. Exploration is in our DNA. And what we're very excited about is that we could have a, um, I suppose, a world-class nickel sulphide opportunity. These opportunities are mostly in the, in the hands of major mining companies. It's very rare to see a nickel sulphide district like this um, in, the, in the hands of a junior mining company and with all the infrastructure in place. So we have the tailings facility permitted. We have um, all the equipment in the stores ready to go, critical spares. It's a, it's a great opportunity to, for us to leverage off the, the good work and, and, and um, capital sunk by the previous owners of the mine. So just back onto the geology. So we're particularly after nickel sulphide. It's a magmatic nickel sulphide. This is very similar to the Norilsk district in Russia and the Jinchuan district in China. So we've got a very similar structural and age setting to some of the largest nickel sulphide districts in the world. And we believe that we have a similar opportunity. The previous owners weren't focused on the geology and the exploration potential of this region. So we've drilled out that first ore body. That's the Band Fook ore body. As we're drilling out this ore body, we made a discovery. Um, we've hit a high grade zone at surface. We hit it running between 1.8 um, to 1% nickel. We've got um, platinum, palladium, gold, uh, rhodium credits. We've got copper. We've also got the cobalt, which is a really important part of the downstream process as well. This ore body, which is the first of our 25 ore body, potential ore bodies, we will um, have the maiden resource over the coming weeks. So you can see on a cross section, we're drilling out that King Cobra discovery zone. We're hoping to chase that deeper and find the source of, the, of this mineralization. So this is a large uh, mag magmatic nickel sulfide intrusion, very similar to some of the, the major magmatic systems around the globe. Um, we will just continue to drill out this King Cobra discovery zone and that will be fed these, these latest holes will be fed into the updated resource later in the year. And, we'll, and we've got uh, two to three rigs drilling on the King Cobra Discovery Zone as we speak. So just on a regional scale, so we, this is the Band Fulk ore body, which we were just talking about. Um, we've got 25 targets of massive sulphide nickel outcropping, undrilled, untested by the previous owners. Um, we, we're using the modern geophysics to unlock what we believe could be a world-class nickel sulphide district. We've moved to the first of those massive sulphide targets and it's called the Ban Chang ore body. And you can see we're hitting a massive sulphide with every drill hole by using the modern geophysical techniques of electromagnetics. We've trained up the local geophysicists. Uh, we have our own drill rigs and we're just systematically moving through, through this nickel sulphide district and unlocking what we believe could be um, one of the one of the world's major nickel sulphide districts. Um, this is what Ban Chang looks like on a cross section. So this is hole one, you can see on the left of screen. And then we stepped out, we went along strike a kilometre and we've hit the same stuff. So this is, um, I suppose, a more of a narrow high grade, potentially for an underground opportunity. The first ore body which we drilled out was a large open pit mine. We will have many open pit and underground mines throughout this district. And, um, and I think what's worth mentioning is that there is the opportunity for underground mining through electric equipment. So if we were to start on the Ban Chang ore body as an underground mine, we have the opportunity to 
to use a fully electric underground mining fleet um, and then potential to go very low carbon, even maybe even towards zero carbon through, through an underground um, electric fleet and also hooked into the hydro renewable power plant down the road. Um, as we continue to unlock this Ban Chang, we move towards the east and we've made a what we're calling a blind discovery. So basically of those 25 massive sulphide targets, they're all outcropping at surface. The previous owners did a lot of surface work. They didn't do the modern geophysics. We've come through with the modern geophysics. We've done some surface work and, and we've made a blind discovery. So there will be other discoveries outside of the 25 massive sulphide veins, which are already outcropping. We will find more nickel sulphide. There's a, a good chance that we'll be mining nickel sulphide in this district for the next 10, 20, or even 30 years. This is our second massive sulphide target. We're drilling this as we speak. I'm pretty excited about what this might deliver. You can see some of the drilling by the previous owners just missed this EM plate. So this is the EM is the signature for massive sulphide. You can see this large um, mag, mag anomaly. So we're in the right rocks. We've got the right sniffs around from the previous owners. And then we're going to come in with the modern geophysics and, and basically take off where take off where they left off and, and really unlock the geology. So the previous owners weren't focused on the geology and we think that's real the, the opportunity for the Blackstone shareholders. But this is what it's all about. Um, this is what our partnership is about. It's about taking that concentrate from the existing mine and pushing it through the downstream process. We're using a pressure oxidation autoclave um, the, the beauty of a nickel sulphide is we float the concentrate, only 5% of the ore body goes through this downstream process and that, that allows for a very low carbon footprint, a low energy, um, I suppose, consumption. Um, we will, we will um, push this process through the hydro renewable power. This is where EcoPro comes in. We will partner on this facility in Northern Vietnam to produce downstream products. Um, like we just said, we are actually looking at going all the way through to the precursor NCM811 product. So we agree with Elon Musk. It doesn't make sense to crystallise the nickel. Let's go all the way through to precursor. Let's do it at the mine gate and let's do it with the renewable green um, sustainable energy. So we're really excited about what this means for the Blackstone shareholders, but also what it means for our partnership with EcoPro to produce some of the cleanest, greenest nickel in the market. Uh, just on the, I suppose, uh, timeline, uh, maiden resource and scoping study due any, any week now. We're just sort of wrapping a bow around the scoping study. Um, we will move straight into pre-feasibility and definitive feasibility studies in 2021. Um, then we'll look to restart and, um, and build the, the downstream processing facility with EcoPro starting in 2022. That really fits very well for the supply demand crunch, which we believe is really going to kick in in 2023. So we're very well positioned to meet that demand that's coming for the lithium ion battery and, and feed into what is a really strong partnership with EcoPro. And, and we believe that's where, where EcoPro really needs um, Blackstone to come and, and deliver the nickel that's required for their future demands. So just in summary, we've got a, I suppose, a, a portfolio of battery and precious metals. Today, we've talked about the Tarquin nickel sulphide district. We believe it, it could be one of those last, I suppose, un, unexplored nickel sulphide districts, similar to the large systems in Narilsk and Jinchuan, Voises Bay. It's a, it's a large magmatic sulphide system. Um, it's like going into, say, Cambelda 50 years ago. We have 25 massive sulphide veins outcropping undrilled, um, untested with modern geophysics. So, it is, it is like shooting fish in a barrel, basically. We're hitting massive sulphide on every drill hole. Um, it's great to have some great world-class geology here. But most importantly, we have the team that can work with our partner, EcoPro, and produce a downstream nickel product for the lithium-ion battery industry. We're well-funded with our last capital raising just recently of $21 million. It takes us to around nearly $30 million um, to, to move forward into these studies, but also to unlock this geology. We've got a proven track record of discovery and creating shareholder wealth, and, and we will continue to add value for the Blackstone shareholders. So thank you for your time.